baseball is back again, and the death rate for office boys' grandmothers takes a jump. All Washington is out, including the President of the United States. If one of you cameramen gets killed, it's your own fault. Welcome to Baseball Biz. I'm Mark Carpet, your host, and with me today is Brandon Noe. And we are celebrating opening day. Hey, Brandon, how you doing, man? I'm doing really great, Mark. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. That, was, that little recording we just heard a few seconds ago, that was none other than 1935, and an announcer talking about throwing the ball out with Mr. President himself, FDR. If you had a chance to be here that guy closely, what he's saying is, Yes, and today there's more young office boys declaring dead grandmas. I said, what? wait a minute, something along those lines. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, that's wicked, but ever so he's talking about youth trying to get off from work to go see the game, and uh, a little strange way to introduce the game, but it's 1935, and they, they were saying a lot of things they probably shouldn't have said then, and certainly not today. Yeah, it's It's really evolved. Over time, the excuses to stay home from work to watch a sporting event. We used to have dead grandmas. And nowadays, for March Madness, we have guys saying or going as far as to getting a vasectomy to watch the first couple days of it. So oh. they don't have to go to work or do anything. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's a painful, painful... Well, I don't know if it is or not. But I would think it'd be, <laughs> that's a painful excuse. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's interesting. I, I've come up with a lot of other things over the years, but uh, usually not dead grandmas and certainly not vasectomies. But, you know, the advent of baseball, uh, the whole idea of the ceremonial first pitch began with William Taft. So he was the first president throwing out the baseball. And back in those days, it wasn't the president throwing the ball from the mound. He was throwing it from the stands. You know, a much easier task, a lot less embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it work. The, you know, back when ESPN Classic was on normal TV and you could watch the old games from like the 40s and 50s, I always thought it was weird as a kid watching these guys throw a first pitch from the stands. It, it's like, it's not really a pitch if it's from the stands. Right. <laughs> right. It's, I'm throwing this ball at you. And FDR would say, okay, if I kill any of your cameraman, it's because you got in my way and it's your fault. I said, well, okay. Like I said, things were a little different back then, but... Yeah, it's insane. If we look at modern day, like you're saying it wasn't really a throw if they're not throwing it from the mound. President Reagan was the first president to pitch from the mound. I think it's kind of intimidated others. But it was interesting to see, too, that uh, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Ma- Sotomayor, uh, a native of the Bronx, big Yankees fan, she, uh, she threw from out there the ceremonial first pitch at Yankee Stadium once. Oh, let's see what else. And I, what, last year we had Fauci too. That was pretty neat. And starting out opening day with Doctor Fauci pitching from the mound. Yeah, he should probably stick to being a doctor and not not a pitcher. You know, I was thinking too. I mean, should we have some of these presidents and politicians and do another ceremony? Not just. I mean, baseball is the American pastime, but I'm sure some of these guys would like to go to oh a football game or a basketball game. Should they have some responsibility in ceremonial thing they should do there? I mean, we've seen, we've seen it a couple of times. They've done the coin toss at, you know, national championships or the Super Bowl. We've seen that a couple of times. The first pitch. Maybe they should just do a ceremonial puck drop because some other throws for the first pitch isn't, isn't the greatest. I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> I, I like that. The, the puck drop is in its, you, know, you just got to get the heck out of the way <laughs> real quick too. So anyway, opening day is here. You know, we was talking about Christmas is coming and man, oh man, I'm excited about it. Had to do a little bit of history first there. But if this is it, 30 major league baseball teams. All of them are playing today. It is opening day. And while we don't have to necessarily give an excuse about grandma with DVR and everything, and certainly we're not all going to be able to get out to the stadium with COVID, there is a lot, a lot of excitement about what's going on in today in baseball. That comes down to this. We've had spring training for two months. And now every one of these young players on a major league team 
is looking at 162 games in front of them. You know, the, the pitchers get a little bit of a break on that. They're, in most cases, not going to get up every uh, to the mound about every five games, unless you're Trevor Barr, who wants to do it every four. Looking at what we've got coming up today, it's starting out at 1 p.m. today, Brandon. You know, let's see, who are the first ones you got coming up there as far as launching opening day? Well, the big matchup that everybody's talking about, of course, has to be the Blue Jays and Yankees. That'll be on ESPN. So that'll be something worth watching. Yeah. And, and you got two nice American League East teams playing. You know, my favorite team, the Yankees. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had some good comments about them last, last show. Yeah. Well, you know, feel free to go back and listen if you'd like <laughs> Yankee and Red Sox fans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, that, that's true. I, there's not much love there especially in my love for Aroldis Chapman. Quick note, I don't know if you heard the other day, but the last uh, spring training game, he didn't do so great at the at the mound, and the fans booed him off. They booed him as he walked off of the mound in spring oh. training. Yeah. Uh, Yankees, what a shame. Yankees fans, there you go, brother. Okay, so they're kicking it off in the AL East. Then some of the other games we got going here. Ooh, Mr. Magic of the computer. Uh, let's see. Cleveland. You have the Cleveland. I don't know if they're still the, still the Indians this year or not. Cleveland and the Detroit Tigers. Uh, let's see. Another grouping of two AL East teams, Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox. Then we've got a matchup with two different, with uh, two different divisions here, right? Minnesota Twins and Milwaukee Brewers. That is correct, and I wish this game were on ESPN or at least MLB Network because these are two teams I have a lot of question marks about. You know, the Brewers, I was really high on them last year, and they they kind of disappointed me even though they made the playoffs, and the Twins had a great regular season, but they fell short again in the playoffs. Yeah, the Twins, I think a lot of us had high expectations for the Twins last year. Yelich with the Brewers, I don't think he did everything that – we thought he was going to do. See, what else is going on after that? The Pirates and the Cubs. Eh, gosh. I, I would, it's going to be a tough year for the Pirates. Maybe they're going to say things like, this is a rebuild year, because I don't really see a lot of light there. We can talk about that when we kind of do the rundown here in a minute. We've got the, the Braves and the Phillies. They're matching up. The Diamondbacks and the Padres. <laughs> oh, there's no reason to broadcast that game, Brandon. No, as as much as I love the Padres and, and want to see them, I, I can wait a couple a couple of days till they get a better matchup. Sorry, Diamondbacks fans. <laughs> What's well, true enough? Then in a similar fashion, so that's two National League West teams, and you got two more National League West teams. You got the Dodgers and the Rockies. Oh, by the way, that game's going to be broadcast at four o'clock on ESPN and MLB TV. But again. You could have reserved, I think, those two teams playing together. I could have watched them or not watched them anytime in the future and been just as happy. This game would have been a good matchup if the Rockies still had Arenado and they were playing good like they did for most of last year, but it kind of went down the toilet pretty quick. Well, Arenado is kind of a key, and I don't know. I wish them well, so we'll see what comes from that. Let's see what else we got. Uh, NL Central, we got the Cardinals and the Reds. Then another mixed matchup between American League West and American League Central, the Rangers and the Royals. Oh, uh, we got another one there. What's the Rays? Oh, ho, ho. yeah, they're going to be down there in Miami, starting out with the Marlins. That should be neat. Uh, what else you got? What else we got? Oh, two of my favorite teams. Actually, I just enjoy watching both of these teams, the Mets and the Nationals. And as we move down the line here, we got the White Sox and the Angels. The astronauts, the astronauts, <laughs> <laughs> some say they're out of out there in space. The Houston Astros, which will be also broadcast at 10 o'clock, you know, opening day here. And lastly, I've got the Giants and the Mariners. Must see TV. That's right. It'd be a nice way to, to end opening day watching that matchup, but we get Astro Lays instead. <laughs> Well, at 10 o'clock, you know, an old man like me, I'm not going to be there anyway, unless it's a World Series game. <laughs> I'll just find something else to watch. <laughs> oh, brother. Well, it's it's going to be an interesting opening day. I'm excited about this. I'll be listening to the radio 
one of the things too to remember, Brandon, a lot of games that weren't doing are not going to be covered on ESPN. You may still be able to see some of them, I believe, on Fox Sports and now Valley Sports. You have to check your local listings for that. But I believe that those previous contracts are going to be honored. And you probably got a great opportunity to see a lot of games there as well. Every time they say Bally Sports, I feel like I'm in Vegas at a casino or something. <laughs> I spent a night at Bally in Vegas. And, oh, it was it was a night where I was watching the Super Bowl with Janice Jackson up there for halftime. And I got a screen about 60 feet wide in front of me. <laughs> oh. Huh. Yeah. Well, what, what popped on the screen Oh, there? brother. <laughs> anyway, but... Yeah, Bally was a gamble that night too. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how Bally Sports goes. I'm I'm looking forward. Hopefully, uh, they they'll see the same sports teams. The same by that I mean the same announcers because you know I've enjoyed most of those. Well, Brandon, now that we know what we have is an opportunity of games to listen to or view, which one really pops at you? Is there is there a matchup out there on the mound that says, "Hey, that that would that I, I wouldn't mind seeing that one." I mean, the biggest one to me is the first game, and that's Cole and Ryu, because those are two guys that were really dominant for all or most of last season, and seeing them go up against each other on opening day on national TV is, is definitely worth watching alone, that in itself. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I've definitely got the DVR going for that. Even even if I'm watching it live, I want to have that one on uh, on record, so I'm looking forward to that as well. You know, we've been talking about the opening day games. And since you've got 30 teams, only 15 of them are actually going to be able to have opening day on their home stadium. How many of these teams, when are they going to be having their home? So while uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day is opening day, yeah, some of these folks are going to be not opening at home until April 9th. There's five of them. You have the Diamondbacks, you got the Dodgers. Got uh, the Giants. Wait a minute. Though all three of those are National League West. And then you got the Braves, National League East, and then finally Tampa Bay Rays, American League East. So you've got four National League teams that won't have their opener until the ninth. And the Rays not until <laughs> again, the only AL East team or the only American League team at all that's going to be doing that also on the ninth. I took a couple things away from the schedule, and and we we talked about this for a couple times the past few days, is I don't really get why some of these southern or warmer climate teams are heading up north this time of year, because they've had problems before in the past with weather during this time of year. I don't don't think they're going to have any this year, at least from what I've seen, but we've seen it where games have been snowed out because they start so early, and from what I see, it's still pretty cold up north. And also, why are they doing opening day on Thursday? I think personally it should be a Friday. And why are most of these games on at like 1 or 4 o'clock when most people are at work? I mean, I know we don't we, we don't really have lives if we don't count. But, <laughs> but most of these games are on at like 1 or 4 o'clock when everybody's still at work or getting ready to leave work. I think it you know should be Friday and maybe opening day starts at around 4. So we could have more games on and get more eyeballs on in what's arguably maybe the second most exciting time of baseball season, second to playoffs. Oh, I definitely believe that. And it it does beg to the sensibilities to ask a question about who is that audience you're reaching. If you're trying to get a young audience, unless they want to go get a vasectomy, you know, they're not going to be watching today. (laughs) So, good Lord. So unless they want to get a vasectomy, they're not going to be playing today. Anyway, it's it's um <laughs> it's a little mind numbing to me as well why they would do Thursday and early early games. Uh, I don't know if that's to fit some kind of broadcast schedule, but it doesn't make much sense to me either why we we'd have these games like that. I could actually since you we have teams that are not even going to have their own open day until the ninth. I would be good with staggering some of this, that we don't have all 30 teams play today. And by the way, quick note, with the Rays playing the Marlins today, you know, it's not, they're not playing in Marlins Park. 
Yeah, yeah, they're not playing at Marlins Park. It has been renamed as of today. Just like Bally Sports is, you know, Fox Sports now Bally Sports. Marlins Park is now Lone Depot Park. <laughs> Lone Depot? Lone Depot. I think they're getting like $10 million a year for that. <laughs> I didn't mean, I've never heard of that. I know. I didn't mean to digress, but I saw that this morning and I said, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> You confused me. I didn't see it. I thought like maybe something happened. No, 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 like, no. Did they get they get kicked out of their own stadium? No, I, that poor team has had so much difficulty and challenges with finances. I mean, Jeter's selling his home. I looked at that as a harbinger of things to come. But uh, well, I, I digress. But I saw that and I just had to say that that just that's kind of scary. But that's what's happening. You get the blood war that is the Citrus Series going down at Lone Depot Park. <laughs> that that sounds great, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's front page. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Okay, that's. It is, I'm just getting in trouble on this. Okay, brother. Well, well <laughs> after realizing all that insanity uh, in the late opening days, why don't we take a look at the projections for 2021? I know you've done some homework on this. And looking at those 30 teams, looking at the National League, looking at the American League, and the the, uh, the conference within, or divisions, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what what do you see in Brandon? What's, what's coming up with that? All right. So since we're talking about the Rays, why don't we start out in the AL East? And this comes courtesy of uh, SI.com. They did a preview of projected standings. And if you look it up, it's a really good article. They have bunch of cool graphs and everything starting the al east they have the yankees winning the east at 97 and 65 followed by the blue jays in second at 91 71 and the rays in third at 86 and 76 red sox fourth at 80 and 82 and then the orioles hauling up the rear where they usually are most of the time at 62 and 100 well i I was glad to see that they gave us they got the rays at least over 500 yeah, and I, I told you this earlier, but or a couple of days ago, but to our audience out there, I saw found it interesting. I was watching Sports Center the other day, and they gave their odds to win the AL East, and they picked the Rays to finish third, but they gave the Red Sox, who they picked fourth, a nine percent chance to win the division, while they gave the Rays a lower chance at three. Now, now I'm no math major, but I think nine is a better chance than six percent to win a division. So why would the Rays be third with a lower chance than the Red Sox at four? I cannot fathom. You know, that's that's just <laughs> I I don't know. That that doesn't make sense. But I'll, I'll say nothing about the AL East. I am looking forward to seeing what, if what the what the Jays do, you know, with George Springer and some of the other ones. But if you have to question the math of Sports Illustrated. I'd, I'd rather hear a little more about what you had to say about some of these others. So c- go ahead and you tell us a little bit more like what's going on with the American League Central. Going to the Central, you have the White Sox winning that division at 94 and 68. The Twins not far behind, but they finished second at 92 and 70. They brought back most of their roster they had last year. Cleveland at third at 81 and 81, uh, an even 500. The Royals at 78 and 84 and fourth, and then the Detroit Motor City Kitties at 64 and 98, bringing up the rear. Yeah, and luckily they're, they're going through their rebuild, so that's they kind of had an excuse. I like it going through their rebuild. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take that one. And we got a couple of seasoned people like AJ Hinch there in Detroit, and got really seasoned Tony Larusa or for the Chicago White Sox. So a lot of seasoning that's going on right there in the. American League Central. What what else we got, man? Well, hopefully for Detroit, they're hoping that AJ Hinch shows a bang up job. But heading out west, Ba-dum-ba. we have the Angel. <laughs> did, did you truly say that? Did you just say bang yeah. up? Okay. <laughs> I'll let him. I said it. All right. So heading out west, we have the Angels winning that division at ninety and seventy two. Two games over the Astros for eighty eight and seventy four. The A's at eighty six and seventy six. Mariners 69 and 93. And then the Rangers at 63 and 99. What a way to start your season off being listed as number five. 
with having that great big new stadium and actually having fans in it this year. Yeah, at least they do have a nice stadium, though. They have that. Yeah, yeah. There's Supposedly, they're going to have 40,000-plus fans there. That'll be interesting. Yeah, okay, so so that doesn't... Sounds like there's still some work to be done in there. What else is happening? All right, heading to the National League. We'll start out back in the East, and one of our favorite divisions that we've talked about a lot. We have the Braves winning the East at 92-70, and 70, and the Mets with all those moves that they made in the offseason. Finished in second at 89 and 73. The Nationals only one game behind at 88 and 74. Phillies 82 and 80. And the Miami Marlins at 71 and 91. Sorry, Miami. You guys are having a tough time down there anyway. Well, what do you think about it, man? I, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, a Braves game and who else we got there? Oh, yeah, the Mets. My gosh, I'd love to see a Braves and Mets game. That would be huge. Uh, can those two teams to me? I'm excited about both of them. And for something I like about New York, it's the Mets. It's maybe the only thing, but I love the Mets. Yeah, this division I, I really want to watch a lot more because I mean the Braves and the Mets. I think that's going to probably come down to maybe the last series, whoever wins the East, and even the Nationals. They could be you know sort of a dark horse with you know Scherzer and Soto, Trey Turner. They can be a dark horse to get in there, mix some things up. And even though the Phillies aren't the greatest team, they're they're good enough to where they can throw a wrench into plans and maybe push the Nationals or the Mets maybe out of a playoff spot if it comes down to it. Wow, that 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 could be neat. Well, we're gonna have to definitely keep a close eye on that. Yeah, even the Marlins who were finished who made the playoffs last year, them finishing fifth, even though that, that's you know disappointing compared to last year, they're not a bad team, even though we talked about them a couple of days ago. We kind of have questions about them going over a full season. But they're a team that could be worth watching too, could throw a wrench into things. Well, they certainly did, you know, last year. Don Maddenley did a, a great job with that team. They got you know, they've got some strength behind some of those bats too. So I'd like to see how that plays out. All right, heading back to the Central in the NL. We have the Cardinals winning that division at 85 and 77. The Brewers in second, only a game behind at 84 and 78. The Cubs in third at an even 81-81. Reds in fourth at 73-89. And the Pittsburgh Pirates at 57 and 105. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think Sports Illustrated would have given a better rating to the Reds if they had kept Trevor Barr. I think they would have. They might be a little bit closer to 500. I don't think they would be, you know, up there at the top of the division with the Brewers and Cardinals, but maybe 78, 80 games. I think they'd be more battling for third than second or first. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I mean, as you and I well know, even if you have great pitching, yeah, you have to have other components of the game to make a difference. And lastly, we head out west for the final time. The Dodgers, of course, winning the NL West at 101 and 61. And the Padres, after all those offseason moves, finished second at 97 and 65. The Giants in third at 79 and 83. Diamondbacks fourth, 73 and 89. And the Colorado Rockies in fifth at 58 and 104. Give me those numbers on the Giants again. Uh, they were being third at 79 and 83. So they they didn't have them hitting 500. It, it seems pretty set what's going to happen, you know, right there with the Dodgers and Padres and all that. Do you think the Giants going to make a difference here too? You know, they might, might maybe a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a huge difference, you know, like we were talking earlier about the East with the Nationals and, and Phillies. I think they could maybe knock the, a couple wins off of the Padres and Dodgers, but I don't think they're going to be a threat to win the, the West. They just might cost them a couple games, you know, sort of like a upset alert. That's a tough place to be. I mean, with those two other teams, it is, it's hard to climb past third with, with the Dodgers and Padres with you. You know, they've, they've got really good players. They have Belt, Crawford, Posey, and, and Longoria there. Those are guys you really can't count out even though they're not what they were, what has it been, maybe six, seven years ago since they last won? They're not what they used to be, but there's still a threat there of, of 
what they can do. Well, that's a pretty good breakdown of the expectations. I know SI had their things to say, and I'm glad you offered some more insight above and beyond what they offered. But we're talking about the time of day that these games are being played. We're talking about the venues. We're talking about how are you going to really reach an audience. And we, we know you're not going to fill the stadium this year. We, we know that COVID's a big part of that. Will we see something around summertime where we can – we can have larger audiences. I, I certainly hope so. I know I, I want to be able to attend several games this year. We'll see if, what happens with that. But now that we've looked at all these projections, you know, the, the silliness about what's happening April 1st, opening day, it is April Fool's Day. So I don't know if this is just some things that, oh, Mr. Clown Manfred, Clown Manfred, I mean, Rob Manfred, uh, what? Oh. <laughs> I mean, these are some of the things Rob Manfred thought, ooh, wouldn't it be neat if? I think a lot of times somebody's like throwing spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. But in lieu of April Fool's Day, probably I should say, in honor of April Fool's Day, we should take a look back at some of famous pranks. And I know you were kind enough to bring up one, and we were talking about the Blue Jays earlier. They had some crazy stuff going on. That was back in, let's see... 1992, they had Fan Appreciation Day. Brandon, I know you brought this to my attention. What, what all did they do on that Fan Appreciation Day? Uh, well, the, the Blue Jays, they wrapped up the division, and they were arresting their, their big guys, and that included Joe Carter and Derek Bell, who was a rookie at the time, and he he got a chance to play, and they, they thought, you know, it's Fan Appreciation Day. Let's have some fun with the, the young kid. And what they decided to do was do a raffle and if you win the raffle you get a jeep as what carter said he said quote in toronto they gave us cars honda was a sponsor so everyone had the same car but Derek decided to drive his own his own car and he loved his jeep and he talked about his sound system so what they did is they had you know like an equipment guy he went to go clean the car or at least he said he was <laughs> and they used the keys and, you know, dirt in between innings, you know how they usually do like games and announcements. And they're like, okay, here's the raffle and here's the Jeep you can win. <laughs> and they drove it out on the field. And I don't know about you, but watching the video, I think his face was great. It's like the ultimate confused, shocked face you could make it. Like his mouth was wide open. It was great. <laughs> well, oh my gosh. I can't imagine. I mean, and it, that that must have been pretty crazy. And who knows? He's like, I can't imagine the thoughts that were going through his head. But looking at that and seeing the Jeep out there, his own Jeep, and hearing that great sound system, what are they doing? What are they, what's going to happen? You know, <laughs> I can't get another Jeep like it. it. It took me weeks to get that sound system just right. Yeah, and they said that the, the sound system was actually more expensive than the car itself. <laughs> And could you imagine the feeling of like being, hey, that looks like my car. Oh, wait, that is my car. Could you imagine that feeling? No, because first somebody would have to give me a car. And, <laughs> and then I'd have to have the money to actually be able to do all that. That's, But that's pretty crazy. I'm sure the, the Jays enjoyed that and certainly the fans as it as they found out the story later. But that's a great April Fool's joke. I don't think it was necessarily done on April Fool's, but it certainly was a good prank. This is oh, well, this is interesting. I didn't see realize this earlier, but both of these come from the American League East. And it's the I call it the 2008 New York Yankees tragedy. What happened was is they were building a new Yankee stadium. A rumor was bounced around out there that some Red Sox fan who was a construction worker had an you know an Ortiz jersey, a Boston Red Sox Ortiz jersey. He mixed it in with the concrete and as they were laying the foundation for the new stadium. And some of the guys had a suspicion what was going on and where it was because this guy, Gino Castagnoli, he only, I think he only worked one day. He must have been a prankster and said, can you get me on the work today? I'm going to get, I got something I don't want to do there, you know. <laughs> and so they had kind of an idea where the jersey was because can you imagine otherwise they, they, they're taking these jackhammers, they're digging for five hours looking for the, to find Ortiz's jersey buried in the New York Stadium, Yankee Stadium. And it must have been maddening. 
So the good news was is that he'd only been there one day, so they had an idea where it was. Otherwise, who knows how long they would have been there trying to find that jersey, jackhammering up the whole stadium. First of all, the dude probably should have kept his mouth shut and not told anybody because could you imagine if it comes out maybe like maybe today or years down the road that there's been a Red Sox jersey buried beneath Yankee Stadium? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and second, the Yankees, Yankees fans and the Yankees themselves were very upset. And Hank Steinbrenner, the owner, commented that he hoped that his co-workers kicked the blank out of him. And they considered pressing criminal charges against oh, him, Lord. such as trespassing and defacing private property. Oh. And I got to say, for being the big bad Yankees, <laughs> talk about being soft. My goodness. <laughs> S-O-F-T soft. Oh, S-O-F-T soft. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, my love for them just my love for them just continues on and on. And when I put this together, some of it, and you came up with the Blue Jays, I, it wasn't clicking at first that they're both AL East, and it wasn't clicking that they're the first opening day game today. So Toronto Blue Jays and New York Yankees sound like some pranks and some fun have been played for there. And hopefully, there'll be a lot of fun watching you guys today. Yeah, hopefully, 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 it's a good start to the season. I hope so, brother. But Last year, again, it was tough. Relatively no fans anywhere until we got into the postseason. And, you know, the <laughs> Rangers Stadium up there, whatever that's called. Not the Lone Depot. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Globe Life Park. Globe Life Park, that's right. That sounds right. So people who we talked about before about the owners of all these hedge managers out there. And now we're looking at Lone Depot and Globe Life. All these folks that we're going to invest our savings with. Anyway. It's it's going to make for an exciting season. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to thank you, Brandon, for pulling everything together there on that rundown on the potential projections. I know you got some of that from Sports Illustrated, but you obviously have dug a little deeper, and it was important to see what others are thinking about these teams. Plus, also maybe what kind of new math they're using to determine what's actually going to happen in 2021. Well, Brandon, excitement will out. It's it's time. It's Christmas time. It's opening day. All 30 teams are going to be playing. We've kind of run down the schedule for you all. Uh, we'll, we'll put up a few things, too, online. We should probably find that grid where it shows all the games and the times. Maybe post that thing from the guy, that video on YouTube for the, the Blue Jays guy and showing his face as they give away his car. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys haven't seen that yet, you got to check it out. It, it's great. Just his face alone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, brother. Well, with that being said, we want to wish you all a very, very special April Fool's Day. <laughs> and hope you don't get fooled too much, but especially a very happy opening day. So thank you for myself, Mark Corbett, who you can find at The Baseball Biz on Twitter, and Brandon, who you can find at Sports Blitz Pod on Twitter. You can share with us your thoughts about opening day. We'd love to hear your experiences. And Brandon, any parting words you have for our audience today? Uh, if you want to get a full story on the, the Derek Bell, Joe Carter story, you can go to LarryBrownSports.com. They have the full story on there. And happy opening day, everybody. Happy opening day. Thank you, Brandon, so much once again for bringing the whole story in for us. And we uh, thank you all for joining us here today. want to remind you that you can find us here. <laughs> you can find us on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on iHeart radio.com you can podcast there google podcast stitcher etc 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 and we look forward to talking with you guys again real soon happy opening day everybody music <laughs> provided by x take rocking forward